Those of us humans who are Christians believe that people should not lie, cheat, steal, or kill. Christianity developed from Judaism and continues to the belief that God is the all-knowing and all-powerful deity who created the universe. In addition, Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Some Christians believe that Christ was God taking human form. In the Old Testament, God told the Jews that he will send a Messiah to establish God's kingdom on earth. Rather than a political kingdom, Jesus came to build a spiritual kingdom to show us how to behave. He suffered, died on the cross, and was resurrected. In his suffering, he atoned for the sins of mankind. He came to save sinners to give eternal life to believers. One achieves salvation by having faith in Jesus. After death, your soul will go to heaven. The souls of the bad people will go to hell. Some Christians believe that God is at once the Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is experienced as the sp spiritual power of God within oneself. Bickle and Jantz explain that Christians take truth from the Bible, which is God's eternal word, and they have a personal relationship with Jesus. Christians believe that the equality of humans emphasize the importance of family relations. The Apostle Paul explained Christianity to Greek philosophers by saying that God is the infinite self-existent creator of everything, and he is Lord over all. He has always existed and he will exist forever without changing. God does not live in man-made temples. Buildings cannot contain him. God is the source of all life, giving it breath. He does not need anything from us, but we need everything from him. God knows everything that is going on. He is involved with his creation and directs the affairs of people and nations. He wants to have relationships with the beings that he created, and he wants us to seek him, not an idol of him. He is personally interested in you and knows you intimately. God is transcendent in that he exists apart from his creation, which is a universe, but he is near to us. We know that he exists because we see his creation along with evidence of his involvement through his son and through his word given in the Bible. One day, God will bring everything to conclusion by sending Jesus back to earth to judge everyone. He proved this by resurrecting Jesus from the dead. God's judgment will be fair and unbiased. Christians believe that God is love and he loves every person, good or bad. Accept it and let it flow through you to others. He has shown how much he loves us by sending his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. He did that to reestablish his relationship with sinful people who had rebelled against him and to save humanity from spiritual death. Salvation is God's gift to humanity. Those who accept salvation through Jesus become a member of the spiritual body of Christ that is the church. Members unite to worship and follow God. Jesus said that a relationship with God happens with one's heart and not an outward public performance meant to impress others. Don't pray or fast in public just to be seen doing so. Don't brag when giving to the poor. Jesus had a few insults for the hypocrites, but mostly he taught of love for others. To understand something of the teachings of Jesus, we'll next quote several of his comments given to the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Jesus said that whatever you want others to do for you, you should do for them. Have compassion for others and help those who need it. Give them as much help as they need, not as much as they can repay. Feed those who cannot feed you. Give to those who ask and forgive debts owed to you. Lend to those who cannot repay. Love everyone, including social outcasts, even the tax collector. It is easy to love those who love you, but you should also love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. If someone sins against you, rebuke them in private. If someone attacks you, do not resist their attack. If someone slaps you, do not slap them back. Instead, let them slap your other cheek. If they take your shirt, give them your coat too. Do not judge and you will not be judged. 
Forgive people and people will forgive you. You should pray for those who persecute you. Be as perfect as your heavenly father. Correct your own shortcomings before pointing out the lesser falls of others. If you love only your family, you're not doing anything unusual. Do not insult others. Do not harm another person or even be angry at them. The gentle will inherit the earth. Be merciful and you will be shown mercy. Reconcile immediately. Blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called sons of gods. God knows your heart. Be humble. Ask for the least of what is available. Don't collect treasures. You cannot be the slave of both God and money. What will benefit a person who gains the whole world yet losses his or her life? There is no material item worth so much to you that you would purchase it with your life. Don't worry about what you will wear, eat, or drink, or about your body or continued life. Don't worry about tomorrow. Life is more than what you eat, drink, and wear. There is no need for anxiety. Seek first the kingdom of God, and he will provide these things for you. Do not break these rules. Practice and teach them. And practice what you preach. Don't be a hypocrite. Be a light so others can see your good works. You will then enter the kingdom of heaven. Hunger for righteousness, and you will be filled. Those who are persecuted for their righteousness will enter the kingdom of heaven. The road of life is broad and full of destruction, but the gate into heaven is narrow. Give glory to your Father in heaven. Have faith and you can do anything. In his book, The World's Religions, Huston Smith says that the faith is the resurrection of Jesus is a powerful belief that does not merely concern the fate of a worthy man, but extends to the status of powerful belief. Goodness in the universe, contending that it is all-powerful. In the first century BC, outsiders said that Christ's disciples showed an immense love for each other and that there was a total absence of social barriers. The conventional barriers of race, gender, and status meant nothing to them. They were equals and lived as though they meant it. They possessed an inner peace radiantly expressed in exuberant joy. They said of their own radiant joy, God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts. The love and joy they had were desired by everyone. They achieved it because the burden of fear, including the fear of death, had been lifted off their shoulders. They were relieved of guilt for their shortcomings because they knew that God loved them anyways. And they were relieved of their self-serving ego. These three reliefs came about because they knew that they were loved. Within every human is a store of love that partakes of the divine and is activated through the love received from others. Whitney Young for the front desk. Thank you. This can be described in terms of the love between a mother and child. At birth, as we begin receiving the love contained in our mother's smile, in turn, it awakens the love within ourselves. Love is a response. When we feel love, the world is beautiful and we will give anything to anyone without wanting something in return. We ache to give to the world that has given so much. If one feels love, not abstractly, but vividly and personally, from the one who unites all powers and perfection, then we are relieved of fear, guilt, and self-serving ego. Jesus taught people of his love. Jesus taught more than just of the greatness of God. Christians feel God's love and know that Jesus is God incarnate. The love they receive from Christ cultivates their own love for others. The Apostle Paul said that this love was patient and kind, not envious, arrogant, rude, irritable, or resentful. It never insists on its own way. It rejoices in truth, not in wrongdoing. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends.